Okay, the first question is, can we lose salvation? Okay. Because there is a teaching called Once Saved, Always Saved. And I'm going to um, send you this. Uh, there, actually, there are many Bible verses supporting that we can lose salvation. I'm just, uh, now I'm uh, listing the most important uh, three verses. <coughs> I'm not, uh, not three passages, okay? <coughs> the first, can you see me? Please let me know. I have started. Okay, um, the first passage is Hebrews 6 4 to 8. I'm still waiting. Okay, um, Hebrews 6, 4 to 8. There it says that, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God, and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it, and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed where N is to be burned. Okay, now, um, here it says that impossible for those uh, to be restored, those who were once enlightened. That means they were in darkness and now they have been enlightened that they have, you know, that give them, God give them the lights into their life and have tasted the heavenly gift that means tasted the Holy Spirit, tasted the work of God, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. They have participated, partaken, uh, have partaken of the Holy Spirit. They have experienced the Holy Spirit and have tasted the, <coughs> excuse me, they have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. The age to come, that means, you know, the new generation, the, I mean, uh, in the future, that he has experienced the power of heaven. And if they fall away to renew them again, so it's impossible to renew them to repentance. So this passage is very clear for those who have experienced God. They have been enlightened that the light of God has gone into the life to uh, turn them from darkness into lights. They have tasted the heavenly gift of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God and have partaken of the Holy Spirit, have experienced the Holy Spirit, tasted the good word of God. They have tasted the word of God and the power of heaven. If they fall away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance because they have, you know, received blessings and then they bear thorns and so it's rejected. So this verse is, is very clear, very clear that people can lose salvation. Another passage is Hebrews 10, 26 to 29. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. 
Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? So here is another uh, verse that says, people who sin willfully after they receive the knowledge of the truth that, that no longer there is a sacrifice for sins for them, but then they will expect the judgment. Uh, again, these verses are very clear. Now, now, does this verse talk about that a person sin willfully? Now here it talks about insulted the spirit of grace. Uh, another translation translated blasphemy. So does it mean that here is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Uh, but still, when we see this verse, we are very careful not to sin willfully. There is a danger of losing salvation. And these verses could be talking about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, but no matter what, we should be very careful that we don't sin willfully. There is a danger of losing salvation. Now, actually, there are many Bible verses, but here I just quoted three. This is Matthew 24, 10. After Jesus talked about that there will be uh, uh, th that wars and famines and pestilence, uh, and then uh, earthquakes and the beginning of the uh, tribulation at the end, at that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Now here it says that they will turn away from the faith. That means originally they believe in Jesus and will betray and hate each other. So they will betray other Christians and hate other Christians. When a person will betray other Christians, that means he will tell the Antichrist where the Christians hide and who are the pastors so that they will arrest the pastors and the Christians. And so they will betray the Christian and hate each other. So this is not just talking about turning from the faith or fall away for a short time, but it's really a permanent uh, turning away from the faith. Now, um, those who support um, once safe, always safe, they use this verse and other teachings to support it. The main, this is the main verse, John 10, 27 to 29. Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. So here it says that Jesus' sheep will listen to his voice and they will follow Jesus and Jesus will give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of his hand or snatch them out of the Father's hand. The point is, the sheep of Jesus, are they the people who was once saved? Or is it the people who have continued to follow Jesus? When we see Bible verses that says clearly that people who have tasted heaven, tasted the Word of God, they already you know, know, they already have experienced God, that they were enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, partakes of the Holy Spirit, tasted the good Word of God, and the powers of the age to come, that these people cannot uh, be renewed again to repentance. So this is very clear. So then, you know, to say that uh, the sheep are the people who was once saved, and this is, you know, pushing the Bible verse. The sheep, you know, what does that mean? It should mean people who follow Jesus all the way, uh, and uh, in Matthew 24 also it says that you know he who persevered to the end will be saved. So those who persevere to the end, not just for a, 
uh, time being. So it's possible to lose salvation according to many Bible verses. So uh, um, now if you have any more questions, I can send you more Bible verses. Okay, and then the other uh, question. Now there is one more question I have, the Bible verse here. Uh, that question says that, you know, some pastors say that now we are in the, in the uh, era of grace, so we don't have to give tithe. And I quoted Matthew 23, 23, that Jesus said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter, which is justice, mercy, and faithfulness, without neglecting the former, which is giving the tithe. So Jesus has said that, that we are not to neglect the tithe. So this is in the New Testament. Uh, so um, there's no reason that in the Old Testament they, can, they give tithe, but New Testament we don't give tithe. And um, now how about people say, well, I really are short of money. Uh, I really have no money to give. That um, now I would still tell them, you have faith, you can still tithe. But if they really have no money to give, I would say, okay, do as much as you can. And when they have faith, God sees their faith and God will bless them. But it doesn't mean they'll continue. There are some people who have money, but they want to keep the money and then they want, don't want to give the tithe then is not trusting in God. So, so I, um, you know, I, I want to say that uh, in normal situations, we all should tithe. Now, I heard, I've read stories of people under persecution and they were put in jail and they don't have much food, very little food, but still they tithe. How do they tithe? Every 10 meals, they take one meal and then share with uh, the ones who need the food more, those who are sick and very weak. They share the food with those who, who don't have the food, uh, who are very hungry, who are very weak or sick. Now this is in the most si difficult situation and people still uh, give tithe. And I've heard that in the persecution of Christians in a country uh, that they have very very little income, very little money, but still they you know they still tithe, and even though they eat very little, they still tithe. So I I just encourage us that to trust in the grace of God, that God is sufficient in His grace to bless us. Okay. Now the other questions. In which point do we say a pastor has stolen church money? Now, the pastor can receive salary from the church. The church can assign how much salary he receives. But other than that, if he take the money of the offering for himself, that is stealing. Any money that doesn't belong to him, that he steals, that is stealing the money from the church. And then here is a question. You're a pastor and you open a church after breaking your former church and you went with members now that you have known the truth, what would you do? Now, um, if a pastor wants to break away from a church, he should break away from the church clean. He should not tell the church members to follow him. He should just leave the church if he cannot serve the church anymore he uh, or he cannot agree with the church anymore he just leave and then but then if some members out of their own decision go and follow this pastor then it's the this other Christian's choice then it's not the, uh, the sin of the pastor but the pastor cannot tell the members of the former church to follow him he if he wants to leave he'll leave uh, without taking any members, he would just leave himself. And then if he, um, 
if he's, you know, anyone follow him out of their own will, then it's their choice. Okay, as, um, here is another question. As a Christian, I was overcome with lust and entered into adultery and ended up losing my first wife now. Now that I've known the truth, will I send away this present wife and return my first wife or live with both? Now this is a difficult situation. Um, to me, the normal thing to do is to keep the second wife. And uh, at the same time, if it's possible to provide for the first wife, uh, to c provide money for the first wife so she can live on his own. So that is, um, uh, I think, what he should do, that he should not leave the present wife unless the present wife leaves him. Okay, and then... Um, which way can we use so that we can overcome sin? So I guess what he's asking is how can we overcome sins, okay? Now I have a five steps to victory. The five steps to victory uh, are first, aware. I, we are aware of the sin. And second, it's destructive. Sins are destructive. That do not sin anymore lest the worst thing will happen to you. And the third is what does the Bible teaches us? And fourth is pray for forgiveness and strength. And five is choose to obey. So the key to overcoming sin is when we have lust or anger or frustration or depression, any negative thoughts uh, in our heart, we notice that immediately we we can become aware of it and then we say it's destructive and what does the Bible tell me to do the Bible tell me to trust in God to obey God and then we pray for strength and forgiveness and then I choose to obey now how do I choose to obey for instance if a person is angry because someone has done some you know done him wrong hurt him then we say okay he hurts me but God protects me. He cannot steal away from me. So we believe that. When I love God, then God will provide for me things I have not seen and the human mind cannot think of. So He cannot steal from me. If I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to me. So I don't have to worry. God will provide for me. Even if this person tried to hurt me, He cannot hurt me. So that is believing that God can uh, protect us and the person cannot steal from us therefore I don't have to be angry with the person if I get angry I'm sinning I will put down the anger I don't have to think about what he has said what is said is negative words is garbage I will keep thinking about God's words God's word is that he'll protect me he'll bless me when I love him he'll prepare for me things I never imagined that God will continue to bless me. Therefore, I don't have to be angry if someone is angry with me. And so we, now, sometimes people cannot do that immediately. Then what they do is they go out and praise God, thank God for every good thing, and then continue trusting God and say, God, you will protect me, you will bless me. Therefore, I continue trusting you, I continue to worship you uh, so that he has strength. To overcome the sin. Now, if he has. <coughs> now, the key. The key to overcoming the sin is to, to believe that sins are destructive. If we sin, we'll lose more. And when we obey God, God will give back to me much more than before. God will bless me much more. That is the motivation by grace. God will provide for me. God will bless me. He will raise me up to a high level. Now, I have been hurt by some people. They, you know, they said something against me, something false against me to attack me. But I just believe that, God, you have a way. And I immediately put away the anger. 
and I talk with my church leaders to discuss with them how to handle the matter and I handle it with them in a peaceful way instead of with anger that I believe that that person cannot steal from me and I continue to follow God and God continue to bless me so we continue trusting God okay now if someone for instance if someone is depressed he's very unhappy what can he do he's aware he is unhappy then he believes that unhappiness and sadness and depression are destructive and then what does the Bible say the Bible say rejoice in the Lord count the blessings of the Lord and then pray for forgiveness and strength and then choose to think about the positive promises of God God promises to bless those who love him God promises to bless those who trust in him when I follow him he will bless me so I have reasons to rejoice and thank God and so then we try to overcome our sadness now for some people they might not be able to overcome the sadness immediately but at least they try to overcome it and if they have a little more joy they praise God and have a little more joy they say thank God I have a little more joy I continue to praise God I have more and more joy so that is the key to overcoming sin to believe that obeying God will be beneficial to us and God is almighty he can help us and also sinning is destructive even if we ask for forgiveness the sin is still destructive for instance if we yell at someone even if we ask him for forgiveness still the relationship would have been affected so any kind of sin is destructive 